Chairman, uh, one of the challenges in serving on the committee is that when you're dealing with uh, important topics like these, to get all of your questions in in five minutes, and uh, which is next to impossible. Well, but uh, I would uh, one question I wanted to get to, and I would miss if I didn't ask of Secretary Tauscher. Uh, first of all, uh, Ellen, it's great to have you back before the committee again, and thank you for your years of work on on all of these issues and your leadership on the uh, the Strategic Forces Subcommittee that you chaired. And now that uh, I was privileged to uh, succeed when uh, when you assumed a new role. Um, yesterday, I had the privilege of attending the, uh, the Nuclear Security Summit, and obviously many positive things have come out of that summit already. Uh, in particular, I noticed the, the, the uh, news that the Chinese uh, uh, have uh, pledged to work more closely with us on, on the Iran issue. And when I met with, uh, with President Hu yesterday, I personally expressed uh, uh, my appreciation for his willingness to do that. Um, also, in particular, we saw over 47 countries come, to get, come together to begin to address the threats of nuclear terrorism, nuclear proliferation, and, uh, and from my work both on this committee and also on the Intelligence Committee, I, I certainly share uh, the President's concern about the dangers from loose nuclear material uh, and rogue uh, proliferators, and I'm certainly happy to see uh, this issue take uh, prominence uh, in this administration. I give President Obama high marks. Uh, in his administration for convening the summit, uh, which is probably long overdue, and uh, it's such an important important topic. Uh, Secretary Tauscher, can you elaborate on some of the commitments uh, from other nations that came from this conference, and also what progress needs to be made before nations uh, reconvene in South Korea in 2012? Uh, thank you, Chairman Lodgman. It's my pleasure to see you again, and congratulations on all your work on the Strategic Forces Subcommittee. Um, Yesterday, and uh, Monday and Tuesday, the President convened 47 heads of state uh, to talk about an issue that particularly animates him, which is uh, nuclear terrorism. And he made very clear that um, while much has changed uh, since the end of the Cold War, uh, that um, it's less likely that the United States uh, or our allies would be subject to a nuclear attack from a, from a big power. Uh, unfortunately, uh, countries that are looking to acquire nuclear weapons and um, terrorist organizations that are looking to either find material or know-how or technology have increased, and that has increased significantly uh, our danger in the United States. Uh, so he brought these 47 heads of state together, and uh, there was a, not only a communique that I think was very positive in, in the commitment of these 47 heads of state to work together on nuclear security and to eliminate nuclear terrorism, but there were a number of what we call house gifts uh, that some of these uh, heads of state brought along. Countries like Chile, Canada, the Ukraine, uh, and, and uh, Mexico have agreed, for example, to eliminate all of their HEU and to send it to the United States and Russia for disposal. Uh, the United States and uh, Russia, uh, we seem to be signing agreements almost every day these days, signed yesterday the Plutonium Disposition Agreement, which um, uh, Tom knows about. It, it was uh, 10 years in the making, had been stalled for many years, but this eliminates uh, plutonium that could make 17,000 nuclear weapons. Uh, the IAEA is going to help us monitor that agreement. Uh, there were a number of other initiatives going on there, and uh, probably one of the um, anecdotes to the, to the whole conference was that while you had 47 heads of state milling around, and many of them brought their foreign ministers and their ambassadors and, and members of their cabinets that deal with nuclear uh, nonproliferation issues, there were many side meetings that were going on where there was a lot of very good work done. And what was very clear, uh, while President Obama presided over this for a day and a half and made some, I think, very eloquent and very forceful statements, what was very clear was that this was an issue that these heads of state, uh, the, most of them non-nuclear countries, believed was important, but it took the United States and President Obama to put this issue in the forefront of their minds and to convene them together. And um, the, the good news is, is that uh, the, the Sherpas, these are the people that uh, managed the process uh, of uh, doing the communique and the work product that goes forward. They will continue meeting over the next two years, and, and uh, South Koreans have agreed uh, to convene what was meant to be a one meeting. Now we'll have follow-on in 2012 uh, for the South Koreans to convene a similar kind of meeting uh, where the work product will be reviewed and these efforts will continue. Um, there were billions of dollars committed by, uh, by nuclear powers to help do cleanups. 
So I think overall it was not only a success in the material things that were committed to, but once again, uh, this is an issue that the President believes that publics and parliaments and certainly the American people and the Congress uh, need to know more about. Uh, for, for too long these issues have stayed in the background. They're very opaque and complicated and complex. And sometimes people say, oh, you know, that's hard to understand. I didn't, I didn't take physics in high school. The truth of the matter is every American and every person in the world needs to know these issues because this is the biggest threat we have. And it is a life-changing event if something bad should happen. And their political will is important because they need to tell their Congress or their Parliament or their head of state uh, that this is important, that they want them to fix these issues, they want them to work collaboratively, and they want strong international regimes like the Non-Proliferation Treaty to be protected. So thank you. I was so glad to see you there yesterday, and many members of Congress, Congress came, but uh, we, we all worked hard on it, and uh, I'm glad that uh, it had such a good outcome. Very good. Thank you. Again, well, thank you for that, that answer, and to all of you on the, on the panel, thank you uh, for the outstanding work uh, you've done on the, the NPR as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back.